Hello and welcome to AP Human Geography, where we're looking at Chapter 3, Key Issue 3 of the Cultural Landscape, and we're considering why do people migrate? Reasons for migrating. We've got two. Either a push factor, which induces people to move out of their present location, meaning they're pushed out of their country, or a pull factor, which induces people to move into a new location, or it pulls them into a new country. Most commonly, we think of perhaps people were pushed out of Europe because they didn't have jobs, and they were pulled to the United States because they found jobs there. Three major types of push-pull factors are political, environmental, and economic. These are the reasons why people are moving. The most common one people move for are economic reasons. And you can see some migrants working low-income jobs here in Europe. And you can see where people are moving from. So percent that are foreign born, when we're looking at uh, Europe here, you have such a large percentage of foreign born people have migrated to Spain. A lot of the reasons are for jobs and for the landscape. We looked at our push and pull reasons. Let's dig into the specific factors. Political is the first one we're going to consider. What are reasons people are politically being pushed or pulled from or to a country? The first one from history that's very common for us to think about is slavery, where people were forced out of their country. They were forced into slavery or they were prisoners, and a lot of those came from sub-Saharan Africa. Other political push-pull factors is political conflict, where we've got uh, wars going on, conflicts between groups of people. And there are terms in here that help us define if people um, are able to migrate or not, or if it's a politi political conflict or not. Refugee is one of the terms that is very important for um, seeing if a, a person is allowed to migrate into another country. Because if someone is deemed a refugee, this is classified as a person who is forced to migrate to another country to avoid the effects of armed conflict, situation of generalized violence, violation of human rights or other disasters, and cannot return for fear of persecution because of race, religion, nationality, membership in a social group, or political opinion. So that's when someone leaves a country. An internally displaced person is someone who is forced to migrate for similar political reasons as a refugee, but has not migrated across an international border. So an IDP is basically someone who stays within their own country, although they've been forced out of their region. An asylum seeker is someone who migrated to another country hoping to be recognized as a refugee, but they don't yet have that status. So most recently, we think about refugees from Afghanistan and Iraq around the time period of 2010 because of all the violence and wars that were going in there. But most commonly, we think of Syria and all the situations going on there with the wars and the terrorism and people being forced out by all the chaos there. We look at the map of refugees as presented in 2012, and of course the biggest areas we see are Iraq and Afghanistan, where people are being forced out due to armed political conflict. This one shows green, as in people were leaving these countries going to Syria, but in 2015-16, we know that the refugee status in Syria is actually really, really bad. So this one should be deep purple as well because people are leaving Syria. We talked about political push-pull factors. Now let's look at environmental push-pull factors. People are pulled to physically attractive regions. You think about Colorado and you have these beautiful mountains or Florida where there's oceans and warm climates. People want to go there. Also in Europe, we're thinking at the, about the Alps in eastern France. They're pushed from hazardous areas. For example, maybe they don't have enough water. There is a drought, so they can't grow crops. Or maybe there's too much water, such as flooding. As far as flooding, we look at this example here in Mississippi where houses were built along a flood plain. And one of the considerations from our text is to think about the 100-year flood plain, which is an area that typically gets built up, and people don't even know it. They, they have their houses built there and they buy them, not knowing that they're living within a 100-year floodplain, meaning every 100 years, this area is going to flood. And people just don't think about it because it's once every 100 years. 
Um, so this is the Mississippi floodplain here, where you can see the path of the Mississippi River, but this is one of those situations where it, it flooded. Maybe it was once in 100 years, but all of these houses and developments are completely flooded. Opposite situation in Niger, where we've got drought, where they, they don't have any water, and you can see this poor animal here has perished because there's no water. We've talked about political, we've talked about environmental, and now economically, what are the push and pull factors? The main one is job opportunities. Why do people leave a country? Mostly to search for jobs and opportunity in another country. We consider Ireland. They've had a, a long history of economic push and pull factors. In the 1850s, we specifically think about the Irish potato famine, which caused huge economic downturn. Um, these dire economic conditions pushed people out of Ireland. But they caught back up in the 1990s, and their prosperity actually pulled migrants back in. But once again, in 2008, when we had the housing collapse, the economic trouble, um, there was not enough jobs in Ireland, and it began to force people out once again. Something that's very important to consider is if someone is an economic migrant or refugee. This, this distinction is important because some workers may be allowed to migrate temporarily for work. What I mean is, if you're a refugee, you are recognized by many countries as seeking asylum, seeking refugee status, where you can move and live there permanently. Economic migrants are not seen as the same status as a refugee. Economic migrants are looked at as people that are just looking for a job. People tend to be more understanding of refugees because of the incredible turmoil and political um, instability they're having to overcome. Economic migrant, people have less sympathy for because they're thinking, well, they just need a job. So it's very important if you're looking to migrate to be seen as a refugee because that gives you more uh, opportunity to migrate. But within the econ economic migrant status, we have the term of guest worker. This is where you have immigrants from poor countries that are allowed to temporarily obtain jobs. And you saw this all over Europe. But these programs no longer exist because many Im immigrants took advantage of the situation and they just stayed there. They didn't leave when they were supposed to. And in the end, they ended up bringing their families and added to the population problems in Europe. Europe's migrant workers. When we think of the jobs that are taken care of by the citizens that are doing um, the primary and secondary jobs where they're working in mines and factories, um, these typically come from the poorer regions of Europe in the south and east because they don't have these opportunities in the, those places in Europe and even the Middle East. Asia's migrant workers. Let's look at China. On the west of China, there's very many poor regions where people are just poor farmers and they don't have a lot of opportunity. They are migrating to the job centers in the cities. Specifically, consider Southwest Asia. You've got wealthy oil producing countries and they have now become destinations for work. So lots of people are pouring in there. So within Asia, you have people going in and out and staying within regions.